dominance from Team Ken, a game show crossover, and a post-game dance party. Match two was full of surprises. I'm Jimmy McGuire. Welcome to All Stars Insider. It is a dance party. Hi everyone, match two is officially in the books. Team Ken is in the finals, and three teams are locked in for the wildcard match. Team Buzzy, Team Austin, and Team Colby. But before we break down all the action, we're gonna go back in time to see how the competitors rehearse for the start of the tournament. Hey, I even got to play the role of Alex, and I must say, it was a whole lot of fun. All right, players, time for rehearsal. Welcome back. It's the All-Star Game. Feels it's great. It's like coming home. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's oh, been a minute. Go full Allen on this. Oh, is that what he I've won games from every spot. Hey, Buzz E. Oh. Hey. We'll be dealing with a delightful Colby. <laughs> it's Julia. <laughs> delightful Colby 8. R, what is a pirate ring? <laughs> Who's like probably the Dodgers? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I wrote my end too big. Oh man, I haven't done this in too long. Oh, what is wonderful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the uh, 20, is... 2015 CSC arena. I know, right? We got it, we got it. I've played this game before. I've played this game before. Hey man. Good to see you, bro. This is my podium, too. <laughs> this, is a, this was your podium for a long time. That's a daily double, hey! All right, Ken, you've got 12,800. Rehearsal. $5. I'll bet it all. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> My anxiety just like shot right up the moment I touched the stage. True daily double. I hate it because I'm never at the same height. You yeah. have that problem? I'll come back. <laughs> nice. We. Why do I put my hand? At least those were real questions, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so great to see the contestants off stage, isn't it? It really gives us a deeper look into their personalities and their approach to the tournament. Now, let's look back at the big moments from match two. Ben, Austin, and Ken start things off. And it's safe to say that Ken hasn't lost a step. Ken? Who is, it's not Buzzy, who is Harold Responding Lord? correctly Ken, to the first five Price? clues of the game. Ken again. What is Bonnie and Clyde? Right. Prompting this Ken, response from Alex. Yes. Nick Austin and Ben, are your signaling devices working? I'm a little confused. Yes, unfortunately they are. Okay. <laughs> it isn't long until he finds the sole daily double of the round. I guess I'm gonna make it a true daily double. Who is Sir Walter Scott? You and just, just like score. that, Team Ken has $8,000. After a missed sword, clue, Austin pulls Austin, his team out of talent. the red. You're out of the hole. Thank you. Austin, what is the 15th? You got it. Yay! But he can't catch Ken, who finishes the round with a significant lead. On to round two. Can Matt keep the momentum going? He comes out swinging with a devastating one-two combination. Martin and Dan Aykroyd. You got them both. Seth and Matt share a little back and forth. What is the comedy of errors? What is Faulty Towers? Who is Corman? What is Atlanta? Answer. Until Matt finally hits a daily double. All right. What is the Mekong? You got After it. After a big successful wager, he finds the second daily double. 4,000. Okay. What is nitrogen? You picked the right element. When all is said and done, Team Ken has $37,500. Matt has made this game a runaway. With such a big lead, Final Jeopardy was no stress for Monica. Leonard responds correctly. Rembrandt von Rye. But with a conservative wager, Team Captain Julia Collins can't think of the correct artist and unfortunately loses it all. Monica caps off an impressive performance for Team Ken by correctly responding to the Final Jeopardy clue. I don't envy contestants coming in to play Final Jeopardy. Man, that's a whole lot of pressure riding on a single clue. But on the flip side, they got to play in a different round for game two. Let's see how they did. We begin the second game with Seth, Leonard, and Monica. Leonard's calm demeanor pays off in the start of the round with an early daily double. Who is Doris Kearns Goodwin? You got her. The familiar brands and songs category elicits some fun responses. What is Grey Goose? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is all about that bass? That's it. <laughs> what a day. What's well, a Polaroid picture? Oh, yes. Yeah. Good to see the contestants are on top of their pop music. 
We move on to Double Jeopardy with Julia, Austin, and Ken. Ken jumps into the fray with a series of quick responses. The Verso Velocipede, Felicia Rashad, Cicely Tyson, March 17th, March 4th, Brock. The three contestants couldn't come up with the correct response to a clue about Canada. Oh, you break my Sorry, heart. sorry, Alec. Yes. Ken bounces back and finds the first daily double. Who are Adam and Eve? You got it. The His very next clue selection, another daily double. What is Morocco? You got it. Austin responds with a late game push. What are the South Sandwich Island? What is gunboat? What is permafrost? That is correct. But simply can't catch Team Ken. And we've got another runaway. The final Jeopardy category is 20th century history. Ben Ingram correctly responds and doubles his score. To 15,600. What? Roger Craig references our sister show in his response. Austin tell you to write that down as your response. It was actually, yeah, my own idea. Okay. But it's the first time I haven't taken orders from him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and finally, Matt Jackson correctly responds and reveals a wager of $538. What does it mean? We'll find out in the interview. And Team Ken is off to the finals. Well, joining us right now are the winners of match two to talk about their very impressive victory, of course, the members of Team Ken. I want to welcome Team Captain Ken Jennings, Monica Tiu, and Matt Jackson to All Stars Insider. Hi, guys. Hi. Congratulations on advancing to the next round. Uh, listen, before we even get into the gameplay, a very significant moment happened uh, in, in the first game. Alex mentioned to you, Ken, that it was the 15th anniversary from your first day that you shot your first show. Were you aware of that? So I always remember that day because it's also my mom's birthday. And I uh, and I was the one that mentioned it backstage. And uh, one of the contestant people was like, oh, I'm going to tell Alex. Uh, and I was hoping, oh, maybe I get to mention my mom on there. But I didn't get to mention. Alex didn't throw to me. So happy birthday, mom. Oh, happy birthday. Now take us back 15 years ago. What was going through the mind of an inexperienced young Ken Jennings that day? Yeah, a young, fresh-faced, ingenue <laughs> Ken Jennings, his first day in the big big city of, of Culver City. Uh, I was so nervous, I left all my wardrobe changes uh, back at my friend's apartment in Irvine. Oh, no. And my wife had to drive down both ways on the 405 with MapQuest directions, because this is how long ago it was, to get my clothes. I was freaked out. Matt, your team dominated right out of the gate. As a matter of fact, it was a runaway by the last final Jeopardy round. What do you suppose gave your team an edge in this match? It's hard to know. I mean, I think Ken came out of the gate screaming in single jeopardy and having that much of a lead to enable me to make large bets when I found the daily doubles in double jeopardy just sort of helped us keep the momentum going. But um, I also think that Roger and Seth were terrific players and so much of it just comes down to finding the right millisecond, uh, you know, being sort of in tune with the buzzer timing, and you know, these guys certainly know as much as I know or more, and so I want to give them a shout out here as well and say that um, it was a well played game for all three of us. Now, Monica, did it help having the legend of Ken Jennings on your side? Oh, yeah. I mean, it helps and it hurts, right? Because on the one hand, it's like, oh, Ken Jennings is on my team. I could just ride the bench like all the way to the end of the game. But on the same or on the other hand, I guess I was kind of nervous where I was like, I don't want to write Ken Jennings down. Like he's done <laughs> so much for like, I guess, nerdy people and Jeopardy is a game, period. And it was like, I don't want his name to be attached to me if I do badly. So I wanted to make him proud. He is the Babe Ruth of uh, Jeopardy. Now, Matt, what was the significance of the wager $538 in final? Um, it's the number of electoral votes in the United States Electoral College, uh, which is a thing that people often talk about and uh, can't really ignore in Washington, D.C., where I'm from. Um, it's also the name of a sort of political and sports data nerdery webpage that I looked at a lot over the past year and over the past couple of years. And so it was a little bit of a shout out to their team. Now, Ken, how about playing as a team? How did it affect the experience of playing Jeopardy this time around? You know, I've said before that Jeopardy is a very lonely and stressful pursuit when you're up behind that podium. And it was just so nice this time to feel like you know, somebody had my back. And uh, Correspondingly, like in that second game, just being able to sit and watch Matt and Monica tear it up was just one of the greatest pleasures 
I've ever had, you know? I was like a proud dad at a Little League game. It was fantastic. Well, <laughs> well, well, now that you guys have played this first match, were there any aspects that you feel were more or less important in this format? Monica? I think that something that we realized actually really like the night before our taping was really the difference in wagering strategy for Final Jeopardy in a two game versus a one game. So as most people know, most games of Jeopardy are just one game. You just have to win the game. And most of us have very rarely been in tournaments with a two game format. So we just didn't have a lot of data to draw on. Because usually, as you mentioned, that we had a runaway in game one, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll also have a runaway in game two. And so we did have to spend a little bit extra time thinking about what do we need to do that might be different than a one-game wager to maximize our chances of winning in a two-game context? Well, congratulations to you all. We look forward to seeing you in the finals. And as we look forward to the wild card match, let's take a look at the updated tournament bracket. Team Ken earns the next spot in the finals. Team Austin goes to the wildcard match and will be playing against Team Buzzy and Team Colby. Unfortunately, Team Julia has been eliminated, but the good news is they're going to be sharing a $50,000 purse. Do you have Ken Jennings or Matt Jackson on your fantasy team? If so, you've earned big. Let's take a look at the All-Stars Fantasy League points breakdown. As you can see, the members of Team Ken really racked up the points. Ken Jennings scored a whopping 31 points from his two games, followed by his teammate, Matt Jackson, who scored 24. Monica Tiu had a very solid performance as well, scoring 19 points. If not for Ben Ingram's 21 points, the members of Team Ken would have held all top three scoring spots for this match. We're heading into the crucial wildcard match. After that dance party, will Team Colby be able to carry that same energy into the games? The wildcard match is shaping up to look a lot like our last tournament of champions. How will Austin, Buzzy, and Allen handle the rematch? As we look ahead to the finals, Ken and Brad have proven once again why they're the best of the best. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Let us know in the comments. Well, that's all the time we have tonight for All Stars Insider. Remember to head to Jeopardy.com and to our official YouTube channel for extended versions of team strategy sessions and interviews. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you after the wild card match on March 1st at 8 p.m. Pacific time, right here on Facebook. Good night, everyone.